Well, you can hear from the warm applause there, music recorded uh, obviously live, and uh, with me live here in the studio is singer-songwriter Ron Kingston. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, so, you're you're here in Hong Kong at the moment, uh, performing, and uh, and I, I'm really curious to hear about uh, that track that we just heard. It sounds like a very interesting and un unusual instrumentation. What can you tell me about that? Yes, uh, that was recorded live on stage at the Intercontinental Hotel here in Hong Kong. And um, I have the privilege of working with two fantastic musicians at that time, um, uh, Kiko on cellist and another gentleman on cajon box drum, which is a little box that is a percussion as well. And it was the three of us on stage and we performed. And uh, now I'm back in Hong Kong performing again on the same stage for this summer. Right, and uh, do you have a similar lineup with you this time, or is it a bit different, or how, how are you working? Um, slightly different. Um, the cellist's wife is actually performing piano keyboard with us, so there's an additional musician now. There's four of us on stage instead of three, which you just heard, and uh, it's a it's a fantastic show. It's um, the Intercontinental and um, beautiful views of the harbour and. Um, enjoying being back here. Right, fantastic. So uh, you have, um, you've put together that, uh, that particular track that we just heard. Um, what can you tell me about that song? That song is one that I wrote. It's called Room 92 and uh, I wrote that um, uh, many moons ago actually. But uh, it's an original track and um, one of many and um, that album is called Unplugged in Hong Kong so there's a series of, uh, it's a combination of original songs as well as cover songs which have been reinterpreted in my own way. Right, well it would have to be reinterpreted for that very unique lineup that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and uh, that project was actually put together here in Hong Kong, but yes. the previous time that you were through. Correct. Um, uh, and and that was uh, around what? 2010. What? Right, okay. Yeah. So this is, uh, you're beginning a, a bit of a relationship with the city of Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and your return now to uh, to Hong Kong has that influenced you in terms of the music that you might be writing these days? Yeah, look, I'm always influenced by um, just life itself, uh, traveling, and uh, I get inspired by everything. And I have written a lot of other songs, and um, I've got a new song that's coming out very soon as well. A song called Varanasi, which is inspired by a. The trip I did to India. Right. So I'm very proud of that song, and um, I'm, there's a video clip that's coming out of that too. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So, um, in terms of the of the various styles that you write in, mm. um, you, you mentioned you know this Varanasi thing, which sounds mm. quite different than than what we just heard. Mm. Um, it, there's the, there's also a more soulful side of the the music that you've been up to uh, recently. Uh, perhaps we could hear a track uh, from from one of those recordings. Sure. Uh, not the Unplugged in Hong Kong yep. album, but uh, a different sort of recording. Uh, what can you tell me about the music we're going to hear next? Then? Uh, the music, well, that studio recording obviously requires a lot of um, uh, studio time where there's a lot of layering of different voices, instrumentation and um, production and obviously, uh, yeah, it's a different process al altogether because it's not spontaneous, it's more about um, layering of different and creating different colors through um, production and um, having another studio engineer by your side as well. Right. What's your process then in, in terms of uh, say you begin the process with a blank sheet of paper and, uh, and your guitar or, or some other instrument mm -hmm. I presume, um, what's, what's your writing process? And does the music come first, the lyrics or how does it come? Both. Uh, sometimes I come up with just a, a song title. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I work from a song title down to the music. So I know different writers prefer different ways. So, um, you know, sometimes they might have a musical piece which inspires in the lyric. Um, I often have a song title and then I work that way. Right. And, um, yeah. Is that, is that how you would describe your particular process in this next track, or was there a, a different sort of uh, route in that? I think we're playing a song called U-Turn, which is the title track of mm -hmm. uh, the album All You Need To Know, uh, which is a track I wrote purely based on um, fiction. It's just basically a track that I wrote fairly quickly, and um, I'm very proud of it, the way it's come out as well. It's, it's got this sort of soulful lounge feel to it, and there's a, a live 
mute trumpet as well in there. So um, um, some people say it has a bit of an Al Jarreau influence to it, but uh, that's fine. Great. Let's have a bit of a listen. Sure. And where did you do this? Where, where did you record this? Australia. One? Oh, nice. Okay. Which city? I'm from Melbourne, so oh, okay. I was, yeah, recorded in Melbourne. Yeah. Right. Who was your trumpet player? Do you remember? Sure. Uh, okay, it was interesting, um, and that, that's not very nice of me not to remember his name because what happened was in this situation, I worked with um, um, a guy called Duncan Cannell, who was my engineer at the time. It was just me and him in the studio, and uh, he played the trumpet on his key. When I said, No, can we make it more authentic? He says, Oh, I've got a friend. Oh, who can uh, let me send the track to him? And he actually recorded from his home and sent the sent the trumpet back. It was an unusual situation because I never actually met the trumpet was player. The, was the that's great though. That's fantastic. Um, was the friend um, in Melbourne or in Sydney or? You don't I even think know it was in Melbourne. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm just making that assumption. But yeah. it was it was an interesting way of. Um, he would have sent the rough track, yeah. and then the guy had a studio, and he would have emailed it back to him. Yes, there's another side of uh, the music of Ron Kingston. Uh, Ron Kingston here in the studio, the uh, featured guest here in the final hour of the Music Infusion program. Um, that that seems like a, a more, say, um, soulful lounge thing you were saying. Thanks. Um, yeah, that sounds great, and uh, and a very interesting uh, twist and and direction compared to the music that we've just heard mm. uh, previous to that. Um, so, uh, quite a wide range of music that you're into. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say, uh, how, would you, how would you sort of uh, describe that style, and in terms of a, a musical direction for yourself, um, where do you see yourself going, say, in the next year or two with the music? Uh, which, which one of those would you say uh, sure. is more representative? Mm. Um, musically, I've done hundreds of lounges over the years, lots of lounges. I'm a fairly... Uh, relaxed, calm kind of guy, so I tend to gravitate towards sort of soulful lounge music anyway, and the way I write and what influences me um, um, tend to be a lot of relaxing music. So um, the, the soulful R&B thing is the direction that I generally move towards. Um, having said that, I love performing unplugged as well. I love just having the guitar and doing it acoustically. Being from Australia, um, I'm influenced a lot by sort of, um, you know, ground roots kind of uh, acoustic music anyway. So, um, but then on the other side, I'm influenced by a lot of American soulful artists like Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, uh, Donny Hathaway. So I've got a little bit of both pulling me in different directions, but at the same time, I can bring them both together. Right. You've mentioned um, influences and growing up uh, from Australia, obviously. Uh, so. Um, what can you tell me about about your musical path, at least from from the beginning stages? Did you always know you wanted to be a singer, for example? No, no. I I actually, as a kid, I always used to um, <laughs> be an actor, a bit of an actor. So I was uh, dressing up as uh, um, Superman and little different sort of heroes from you know comic heroes and stuff, and uh, Indiana Jones and things like that. So as a kid, I was always acting and drawing um, and then I started to mimic I started to mimic voices from Star Wars and Darth Vader and, and different characters and um, and then I think through my ability to imitate I got into singing as a teenager so it was kind of a I was kind of a late bloomer in terms of music I never I mean pre-teens I never thought about singing at all but I think it's sort of had this natural gravitation towards moving as a singer. Sure, and and also your personality seems to, with the uh, with the acting and all that, uh, uh, enjoy the spotlight, perhaps, or or there's some attraction towards being, you know, um, being a performer. You know, sure, because. sure, it's all related. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, but musically speaking, then you didn't get into it until a bit later in the teens. Yes, and then and then what were you doing there? Did, like the school band or the uh, school choruses or what sort of uh, music? Well, I got influenced. The first, very first concert, um, I was, my mum took me to this concert was Billy Joel, and um, well, that's a nice place to start, I guess. Yeah, I was blown away um, watching him at thirteen, and uh, I said, "Wow, that's what I want to do for a living." So then I, I began using my 
creativity to write songs and um, you know and just my imagination to, to write and you know I was writing and, uh, and writing and then I got into you know obviously high school bands and right. um, ended up winning a, uh, a high school competition in year 12 final year sure which was interesting yeah and so uh, from that point then from uh, from the from the point of winning that competition perhaps mm. then you could see the light that uh, yes this is a possible path for me or this mm. uh, you know doing this full time for my life yeah. is going to work uh, i just follow my instinct really and i just honestly i just follow my heart right you know uh, it sounds a little cliche but it's true and um, i just really believe in i think it's the songs that carry me. I believe in, in, in the songwriting and the songs that I've done and I really would like to share that with other people and um, just putting a smile on people's face or moving people emotionally is what sort of uh, keeps me going. Right. Really. Yeah. And what were your what were your first real gigs then? Um, you, you mentioned through school mm -hmm. and then winning this uh, award which mm -hmm. would have been a kind of a nice turning point I suppose. Yeah. Um, but then what happened after that to blossom out and become a professional? Um, basically just I used to play in a lot of um, small bars back home and then I got into playing casinos around Australia yeah. and um, private events, corporate events, um, ended up doing um, you know weddings and parties and all that and um, interacting with people and um, I, tr I always try to bridge my original songs with uh, obviously favorites that people like so they get a bit of both familiarity with some originality as well, and um, and I I love traveling as well. So um, the idea of combining travel and seeing the world with my music would, was the ultimate, really. So, sure. Uh, and now I'm here. Yeah, and here you are. <laughs> so. um, and and uh, interesting then that from this um, you know this sort of Stevie Wonder Marvin Gaye background that you, you know influence in that direction, mm -hmm. the Billy Joel thing at the, at yeah. the very beginning. Um, and coming up through, I, I can't imagine that there's too much demand for cello, percussion box, yes. and vocalist at, at the casino or some of the bars that you may have been yeah. playing in. So um, how did you get into that actual sound? Well, the, the cellist and percussionist, was I was very fortunate to have met these guys in Hong Kong. And um, the, the venue itself at the Intercontinental... Um, did really actually gave me that concept and that concept was um, provided for me so when I came here um, I was introduced to the cellist and percussionist and um, we performed um, for, for many months together and um, you know the, the raw authenticity of having the three instruments on stage um, I guess gave gave this sort of new energy this new vibe and I'm really very happy about that. Yeah, yeah well, that's uh, that, that's quite an interesting story because it does seem to work rather well mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, in terms of the sound and and, and it's um, it's interesting that it was just sort of put together almost by happenstance in a way. Like it, it came together. You mm -hmm. didn't know them at the beginning and exactly and um, seemed exactly. to blossom out yeah. rather well. Um, now, in terms of the the musical direction that you see yourself going in, yes. it's, it, it is more of the uh, the soulful lounge mm -hmm. thing that we. we we talked about yeah. before, and I'd like to uh, I'd like to explore a bit more of that music with you here this hour. Um, what can you tell me about All You Need to Know? All You Need to Know is the title of uh, my new album, and uh, it's a song that I co-wrote with a friend, and uh, it's a song that's um, basically um, a, a lot of people enjoy this song because they can sing along to it, and um, um, it's basically a reassurance of, of love and um yeah check it out all right let's hear it nice i like that yeah. cool ron kingston just there with uh, all you need to know the title track off of the um latest album yeah um you have how many recordings in total uh, I've got four albums that I've recorded in total, right, and um, a few little EPs as well. So uh, okay, mm. yeah, you've been quite busy. Uh, in addition to the live performances, which have really taken you almost right around the world, haven't they? Yeah, I've been very fortunate to be performing, uh, to have performed in, in many countries. 
um, mostly in Asia, a lot in Asia, but I've also worked in um, the Gulf as well, and um, and I've done a few little stints in the States as well. What are some of the places you've been? Just uh, just uh, entice us a bit. Sure. Um, well, I've I've been to Brazil. That's about as uh, exotic as I've been in terms of um, doing a few things musically there. Um, certainly Southeast Asia. Most recently I performed in Indonesia. Um, and um, I've also performed, uh, you know, as far north as uh, South Korea. <laughs> as far north as South Korea. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so how was Indonesia? Did you get into the uh, local gamelan thing at all? Was it, did you hear yeah, that? I did. Of course I heard it. And I, I love... I love being influenced by local instruments and um, I'd certainly love to incorporate some of those instruments in, in my music, which I have on a, on a track called Varanasi, which I'm about to release, mm. which is as a tableau influenced by India. Um, yeah, so uh, everywhere I go, I try to get inspired because that's, that's inspiration is everything. Uh, right. Um, and uh, and do you have a method for that, or you just sort of um, take each day as it comes and then and see what strikes you, or or do you actually go out and, and say, okay, today I'm going to investigate gamelan, or not really? I just um, I don't intentionally go out and um, I just get influenced by whatever's around me, and I try to get meet new people, and um, um, you know, and I don't want to become stagnant. You know, Rolling Stone gathers no moss, so I try to just keep myself um, around new environments in order to be influenced. As you uh, create your style and create your sound mm -hmm. and, and move forward uh, through your trajectory, um, wh what, are, what are the uh, sort of guiding forces or, or influences or people that you think, yeah, that, that's sort of, that's kind of the thing that I'm doing, that, that's me. Where do you fit into that picture, that overall musical picture? I think musically, um, I see myself as as really um, sort of. Um, I tend to attract more females to my music than males, so it tends to have a a more romantic um, uh, signature with my music. So uh, it's certainly um, I would like to be mainstream, but still soothing at the same time. I find a lot of music today tends to be in terms of pop music it tends to be very aggressive and fast and um, I don't see it has to be that way so um, you know perhaps that's a different audience but um, I try to make my music as um, not intentionally but it just comes out fairly soothing maybe by the tone of my voice or uh, what I'm influenced by so yeah and uh, going forward in terms of the next uh, city after Hong Kong, because um, uh, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be here for right through the summer, right? Yes, yes. I'll be here until August 5th. August 5th, yeah, so June, July, all good. Um, uh, what might be next? Um, um, you might not want to give away all your plans. No, but, that's uh, fine. You know, uh, there, there, there might be a few things in the pipeline people sure. might want to hear about. Well, um, it looks like I'll probably be going to mainland China, uh, possibly Beijing. Uh, unconfirmed yet, but I've never actually performed on main, in mainland China, so uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. That. And w what sort of group would you be bringing there? What uh, What sort of instrumentation? Then? Um, that would probably more likely be a solo gig. Ah, right. With just myself, right. vocal, guitar, and I play a bit of keys as well. Yeah. So, um, and I might bring a couple of. Um, I, other musicians as well, so we'll see. Yeah. Exactly, um, and the, the 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 unplugged sound that you're doing here in Hong yes. Kong, um, relevant towards uh, people who might want to come check you out live, for example, sure. uh, over the next couple of months yep. here. Um, um, I'd like to hear a, a bit more of that kind of a thing sure. to introduce people a bit more to that. We heard one at the very top of the hour uh, of that style, but um, but let's go towards. Uh, towards this Michael Jackson tune, actually. Yes. Um, but I take it, well, you would have had to rework it with a cello and a, and a box per, of percussion. Mm. Go on, yeah. <laughs> yes, so I can't really get that word out, but uh, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> um, it, it would have to take a bit of reworking to do a Michael Jackson tune with yeah. that sort of yeah. instrumental force. Um, what have you done with this? Okay, this is called Blame It on the Boogie, mm -hmm. and basically it's a, a 70s... Um, 
uh, Jackson 5 disco song. And when I first arrived in Hong Kong in 2000, 2009, 10, uh, 2009 it was, because Michael Jackson just passed, and uh, everyone was moved by that, including myself, and uh, I decided to do a song um, from him, and uh, I basically, we basically flipped this song, which was this happy disco song, and we turned it into a really a very somber song in memory of Michael Jackson, so it's, it's very different to um, his original track. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, nowadays when artists uh, come in to, to this show. They always uh, have all the uh, the multimedia and the um, the new media, and they you know they're on their sort of Weibo's, their Twitters, their uh, Facebooks, and all that. Are you into that kind of stuff? Yeah, look, I try to keep in touch with everyone through the social media. Right. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, people can find me at ronkingston.com or Facebook, Twitter. Um, YouTube as well. There's plenty of music video clips that I've um, been involved with in terms of my music, uh, live shows. They're all online. So wow, fantastic. Um, do you have you had to almost train yourself then to kind of manage all of these uh, these different media and, and websites? And is it is it a difficult thing, or or do you have someone who helps you? With um, it? Yeah, look, I, I do have um, you know web people who uh, help me obviously manage the websites and uh, update things for me and um, but uh, I really uh, enjoy getting involved and connecting with people and it's a great way to sort of you know connect and be in touch and uh, and as you consider a, a performance um, stint in mainland China mm. would you consider getting into Weibo or any of the uh, Chinese specific um, uh, social media that they have going on up there yeah well, certainly. I mean, if uh, I believe that some of the possibly YouTube may not be accessible to That's people right. there, so um, YouTube and Facebook for the right, most part, yeah. right? I, right. So uh, obviously, I'd have to explore other avenues. Yeah. Um, and in terms of online um, sales mm -hmm. uh, of of your music, is that is that the type of thing that you um, you involve yourself in, or, or is it mostly you know people at your gigs might pick up a CD? Yeah, people at the gigs can pick up a CD. They can buy an album, and uh, people like to be more spontaneous. If they're moved by the music, they right. may want to buy the album, and um, I, I'm very appreciative of it because they can connect with the artists as well, and. Um, and I think it's it's people like to be more personal in that way in terms right. of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is, is it going forward? Do you do you imagine that uh, distribution of music will become more and more internet based as a general as a general thing? It is becoming digital, but um, we're losing the human touch that way. I mm -hmm. feel. Um, I just I always think uh, you know the human connection. Um, you know, if the artist and the the user, I mean the people who enjoy the music, can connect more freely. Face-to-face, -face obviously, is yep. more natural that way, but people can download music online, and um, both legally and illegally, unfortunately. Um, but uh, that's the reality of the situation of the uh, digital world that we live in. So, right. Yeah. Um, do you imagine that, that you yourself may mm. shift towards a more digital uh, way of getting your music out there, or is it is it something that you really feel is best mm. left towards um, people who come to the concerts? and, and Both. Um, I have my music available on iTunes and all the online um, right. stores. Um, in terms of my music, though, I always remain organic mm -hmm. in terms of the style of music. Um, but, um, but both are accessible to the public. Sure. I talk to a lot of musicians um, who, who come on to this mm -hmm. show and, and other programs, and um, I, I get a sense, and I'd like to get maybe your take mm. on it, that um, the, the things within the record industry are really shifting. That, mm. that it used to be uh, people would be, get a bit of a name, get, get uh, some buzz happening about themselves, and then they'd put out a, an album and mm. make a lot of money from it, mm. from sales. Mm. Now it seems more that the paradigm has shifted mm. the other direction. So people will, at best, often break even on a CD project. Mm. But the idea is to gain a bit of a, a buzz and following through the CD, almost like a business card. Mm. And from that, 
springboard into live performances from which they get income. Exactly. So um, what, what's your what's your opinion on all? Definitely. That? I mean, uh, most musicians these days uh, make more money from live performance than they do from CDs. Right. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, if you think about it, the price of a CD versus the price of a concert ticket. Yeah. Um, what five, ten times the yeah. price? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Totally. Uh, that's that's just the way it is, and I know that. Obviously, perhaps many years ago it was the other way. So. Right, right. That's a, it's an interesting shift to watch happen in mm. the industry as um, all of us are, you know, sort of stakeholders in a way mm. in this industry in some way or another. Um, speaking of, uh, you mentioned we've done several original compositions. I was I was curious to note a track named Roxanne. Is that is that a sting tune? Is it that, is. That's it the is. Sting tune? It is. It's a reinterpretation of one of his tracks as well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and it's yeah it's got a bit of a twist to it but um, it's got the cello and the yeah, percussion right unplugged yeah yeah um, what would you um, how would you describe your your sort of perception of Sting and, and has he been much of an influence he has I'm a big Sting fan um, you know listening to all his songs from the Police right through to uh, his current music and his different. Um, genres of music and um, I throw in a few Sting songs at my shows as well. Beautiful stuff there from uh, singer-songwriter Ron Kingston who's uh, been my guest here this hour. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. It's uh, It's been fantastic to uh, to have you here in the studio and uh, I definitely do wish you all the best here in Hong Kong. Thanks. And uh, and for future endeavors. Let's uh, let's look for you on uh, on ronkingston.com. Thank right. you, yes. And um, and we'll check out uh, check out the live shows at the Intercon while you're here. All the best, and uh, thanks for coming in.